All right, well, we get to talk about some cool stuff this time. Bob actually had some good success on the dyno, um, which the last two trips we haven't really done so hot. So I'll explain a few things, what we did. And we made 15 pulls, but I'm only gonna show you a few of them because it gets kind of monotonous and repetitive and all that jazz. But anyways, <clears throat> first things first, Bob got a new cam. He got new valve springs and he got a shaft rocker conversion using stock rockers. All the stuff uh, from the BTR lineup. So, <clears throat> oh, and the cam is a custom grind uh, specifically for this particular setup. So anyways, um, let's see, where do we start? Okay, I'm trying to decide in what order I'm gonna show you the pulls. I don't, the, again, there's 15 of them, so I don't remember what boost and what pull other than a few select ones, but on the very first pull, Bob was on the wastegate only, and it made a whopping five and a half pounds of boost. Um, I didn't think that particular pull was ever going to end, and I only revved it to 6,800 or something like that. So Bob made a 568 horsepower, I believe, and uh, held oil pressure and all that good stuff. So anyways, um, subsequent pulls, we went up in five pound increments on the dome pressure. And by the end of the night, we ended up, well, I'm, I'm gonna back up a little bit. I'm gonna explain one thing to you. So we had at 25 pounds of boost, which was something like um, 20 pounds of dome pressure, I think is what it was. It made 1100 horsepower, it made 1098. Um, where the week before, or the last time at the dyno, it made 1007. So anyways, uh, we fast forward, we move on. Uh, we turned it up to 25 pounds of dome pressure, which was 30 pounds of boost. And Bob only picked up about seven horsepower. And then we bumped it up again to 35 pounds of boost and uh, 30 pounds of dome pressure. And Bob picked up another seven or eight horsepower. So thinking about it, or, you know, the immediate feeling is, is that, man, that's kind of weak, you know, it didn't do anything, but it sounded drastically different, which is what you would expect. Anyways, um, like I always tell everybody uh, when I help somebody with their car on the dyno, we don't race the dynos. It's, it's only a tuning tool to try to get things uh, headed the right direction with the fuel curve and whatnot. So after going back and reviewing data logs and you know all those kinds of things, um, it anything above 25 pounds of boost, it's spinning the tires pretty bad on the dyno. Uh, keeping in mind, it's running on methanol. It's using another, between 25 and 35 pounds of boost, it's using an additional 440 pounds per hour of fuel. That is a pretty healthy gain in power to use that much fuel. So, uh, no better time than the present. Let's look at a couple of those runs right now. So one thing you're going to notice, or you might have noticed in a couple of these pulls, is that there is a little fireball that comes out of the driver's side wastegate on D-cell. Now, normally that wouldn't really spark any kind of concern, but Bob has a weird surging um, that's kind of hard to hear in the video, but you can see it in the dyno graph like this. You can see it in the boost curve. It's kind of jagged, you know, and it only clears up in high boost. 
Now I'll, I'll rewind a little bit and for those of you who've seen the other dyno videos will remember me talking about something similar uh, back then. So what I think is going on is now that I fixed the passenger side wastegate, it had an internal leak and it did some weird stuff and it actually lost power when you turn the boost controller on. That one's fixed, but I think the driver side wastegate now has a similar problem and it's not as bad if that makes any sense. So I'm going to pull that wastegate off of there. We're going to tear into it and see if we can find out where the leak is because it's definitely doing something not right. So let's look at that too. Okay, so we decided to forego the wastegate repair. Actually, I did try to fix the wastegate. Um, that one in particular leaks. I even smeared some silicone around the edge of the diaphragm and you know tried some stuff like that to get it to work uh, just so I could make sure that's what was wrong with it, which there's really no making sure because we really know that that's what it is. Anyways, uh, it has cheap wastegates on it and it's just not worth putting the effort into trying to fix them. And in this particular case, I think the wastegate is leaking um, where the two pieces of metal sandwich the diaphragm and where the spring sits, it's somewhere in there. So, you know, it's just, I mean, they're cheap wastegates. So anyways, I went to Summit and I bought two new ones um, to put them on the car. And this time I'm going to pressure test them before they actually get onto the car. Um, because now I know what the symptoms are when this thing is not right. So anyways, so the first two pulls you saw, uh, as the text says on the screen, uh, they're kind of low power. Um, one, like I said, no wastegate or no, bo no boost controller turned on. It makes 560 or 70 horsepower or something. And then like 10 pounds on the dome and it makes like 750 or something like that. But we don't ever race 750 horsepower. <laughs> so in the next couple of pulls, uh, Bob likes to party. So we turned up the boost. Um, there's a noticeable change in pitch because it picks up another three, four, five hundred horsepower, you know, so, uh, it's, it's, it's different. Um, next two pulls, I may not have it exactly right, but it makes, um, right at a thousand horsepower. We put a little bit of timing in it. It makes 1100 horsepower on the same boost. And then we put the, uh, party tune in it and it makes 1117 horsepower. Um, I'll, I'll fill you in on the details after I show you the pulls. Let's see if you can figure out why it only makes 17 more horsepower on 10 more pounds of boost. So now you saw those two clips. Did you figure out why it only made 17 more horsepower on 10 pounds of boost? 
Well, it spins the tires. Um, it's not really easy to see in the video like you would think, um, but the dyno or the, I'm sorry, the data log clearly shows that when the boost sets in, uh, the drive shaft speed starts to uh, take off faster than it should. So, um, based on fuel consumption, Bob puts down somewhere in the neighborhood of 1350 to 1400 to the wheels. Um, Beings that it was spinning on the dyno, we stopped putting any more boost to it because it's, you know, like I said earlier, we just don't, we don't race the dyno. The dyno doesn't do anything for us other than rule out the variables of going down the track. Um, and that's, that's all you want to do. You don't have to worry about keeping the car straight. You don't have to worry about nothing crazy like that. Just get in there and floor it and you don't have to worry about crashing. So that's cool. So last but not least, uh, time for the outro part of the video. So Bob is cured 100%. Some of these videos I've set up and, and uploaded out of order, but be well, you get it anyways. Um, so Bob is fixed. The coolant pressure is low on 35 pounds of boost. Bob is seeing single digit coolant pressure, which is good. Um, that means we got a little more room to put a little more boost in it, which we like to do. Um, so he needs some a bunch of little odds and ends stuff done to him over the next you know week or two or something like that. Uh, we're getting into the rainy season here, which historically is the entire month of May. Um, so we got April to go through. We're gonna start seeing some of that rain, and it's gonna suck. And track visits will be spotty, uh, you know, here and there through April and May. But anyways, I got a couple side projects that I got to get finished up, um, like. This thing is back um, for his turbo kit upgrade, which was planned all along, by the way. And stuff like that. So I'm going to sneak in some work on Bob here and there and hopefully get ready for the track in short order. So anyways, if you made it this far, you won the internet. You are really bored. Thanks for stopping by, guys. I appreciate it. Stay tuned for the next one.